there, everybody. Welcome back to Star Wars Lads. We had a video scheduled to come out today. We had the High Republic Phase 2 and 1 reading guide. It was a, a long, in-depth video coming out today, this morning. It was coming out uh, <laughs> in about an hour, and this trailer dropped. So you're getting a trailer reaction for Ahsoka Trailer 2, I guess, or they're calling it an official trailer. It's probably the last one was a teaser. Uh, we're going to give you guys our live reaction to this right now. And you'll be getting the t uh, reading guide tomorrow, so <laughs> stay tuned for that. It will be our last piece of High Republic Phase 2 content. But let's dive into this Ahsoka trailer. I can't wait. We've been waiting, anxiously awaiting this oh, trailer man. to yeah. come out. <laughs> uh, Star Wars has kind of been out of the pop culture conversation, so it'll be exciting for Ahsoka to return and exciting to get back into Star Wars stuff once again. New release, Star Wars TV. So we're going to start here in... Three, two, one. War is inevitable. One must destroy in order to create. We are no Jedi. I hope we're getting the dark Oh man, stuff. they're really getting <laughs> murderous <laughs> already. Of Thrawn's return as heir to the Empire. Oh, what a shot. What is that? What happens when we find Thrawn? Power. Such as you what? Oh, what is that? I've spent most of my life fighting a war. That's why I'm trying to convince you to help me prevent another one. All right, Hera. Oh, okay, Hera. Hu Yang walking? Us. All right. She's still just as stubborn as ever. <gasps> the Ewing! Let's go! Times. Anakin never got to finish my training. I walked away from him. Oof. Just like I walked away from Sabine. Oh, wow. He never made things easy for me. <laughs> what, what droid is that? It's like an R something? Oh, yeah. yeah. As a Jedi, been sometimes training. you have to make the decision no one First else time we hear Ezra, training. okay. Sabine. I'm counting on you to see this through. Nice haircut. Oh, August 23rd. Okay, okay. There's two of them fighting? Sometimes okay. we have to do what's right, regardless of our personal feelings. There's gotta be a lot of left over. Buckle up. If we don't stop Thrawn, everything. Oh, let's go! Yes! <laughs> you have no Wait. power. Yeah, she doesn't have Thrawn. Okay, I was like, wait a second. Anakin spoke highly of you. What? Balin knows oh, Anakin? He knows Anakin. Oh, they, they are doing stuff. Yeah. Once a rebel, always a rebel. That last shot, that better be like the first shot of the entire, uh, the first scene of the entire first wow. episode. Yeah. Like that. That's such like a samurai western like thing for Dave Filoni to start the whole thing on. <clears throat> I think that's going to be the the first. No, for scene. sure. Wow. Uh, wow. Yeah. So, I mean, there's a lot there, obviously, we can talk about. <laughs> um, I think right off the bat, I mean, we kind of get a general sense of what the story is now. I think uh, yeah. with, we always assumed, you know, it's about the hunt for Ezra and stuff. But here, uh, there's, we get a little bit of confirmation that time has passed over the course of this story. And we figured this story would be like flashback, flash forward, uh, kind of multiple different timelines going on at the same time. But uh, it seems like Sabine has been training with Ahsoka. <laughs> she calls her master, which is pretty, pretty crazy. Uh, that's just a, a cool development. She's like watching Ezra videos. It's almost like Ezra, you know, he cheated in making a holocron. Didn't really make a holocron. He made a, a video a hologram projection. Our recording, <laughs> um, yeah. <laughs> tra help train Sabine, but God, so we're so we could be getting. But there is an interesting line, and I caught it here. I don't know if you heard that one with. Um, uh, let me skip over here when when Sabine is fighting. Yeah. And then, uh, what's that girl's name? The white hair, Shin. Shin. Shin says, "You have no power," which you know is good. Thank God, because they, I don't want them to change. I don't yeah. want this to be legends where they just give people force powers randomly when they're thirty years old. Uh, but uh, yeah. <laughs> so I don't want Sabine to be like a force sensitive Jedi. But 
It'd be cool if she's learning the ways. I don't know. Yeah, I mean, it's kind of like when you look at the title The Force Awakens, right? I don't think it necessarily means the je- uh, people who are Force-sensitive are suddenly getting it. It's more like the Force is more, you know, stable, more powerful once again. And it's pretty interesting because the comics have been kind of dealing with like stuff like Force Ways and disruptions and the period between Episode 5 and 6 and how it's affecting both the light side and the dark side users. So that's that made sense here. But this line with like Shin and then her hand out there, I was like... What's happening there? I think I think it's more like stop, right? Like don't don't attack me. But I don't know. It could be bait by by so Sabine. I think she can. Yeah. I think she has some tricks. Over. She's got the vibro branches for sure. Like she's she's got everything up for. I want to see that in live action, mm-hmm. like a uh, yellow whip kind of coil around. Yeah. I want to see if it'll look good. But I think so far they've translated everything really well, looks wise, right? Even like this this looks great. Like, yeah. I don't know. It's it's yeah. It's kind of shocking to me that this. Yeah, I'm also very happy that the celebration trailer, uh, this, uh, that showed the E wing, we get that a little bit more of like the full scale one. I'm very curious why it's like Sabine is like kind of running with it or ch- being chased by it. I'm not really sure what they're really doing there, but it's pretty interesting. We're gonna get uh, in typical Dave Filoni fashion. We are getting like every single angle of Lethal in this. Oh man, you know, uh, the whole first episode, and then it said two episode premiere, so that's pretty exciting. That'll be like a two hour, hopefully, and le- hopefully it's not like an hour oh, yeah. and a half or an hour with two 30 minute episodes. Hopefully, we get like two 50 minute episodes, 48 minute episodes. Right. Really get into this. I mean, obviously, the money shot Thrawn, uh, we finally get to see it. It's finally official, uh, after it getting leaked from Celebration. I think he looks really good, uh, obviously. I want to see him do a bit more than just walk in to see really what, you know, he can do. He looks like facially, but uh, for the yeah, most part, it's yeah. the performance that matters more so than the way he looks facially to me. I think, uh, right. You know, every time something like this comes out, I know a lot of people have been comparing his look to Elon Musk, uh, but every God, time something comes that. out, everybody <laughs> hyper fixates on the way it looks and then eventually when we watch it nobody cares like we we we're just uh talking about um hugh jackman returning for deadpool 3 and oh my god when when he got announced it was like what he's not five seven he's not hairy and canadian uh so now everybody's excited to see him (laughs) 25 years later in deadpool 3 so i think thrawn will be great because the performance is going to be great uh, but also, I mean, he looks, he looks, he looks great to me. I think my, I can see some people feel like he should have been more much. He's more, more yeah. like perfectly symmetric hair with like the widow's peak and, yeah. you know, like the more like legends inspired look and a little bit more of how it was played off in rebels. But if you can bring the guy who did a great voice performance, who is also a very accomplished like, actor himself, like I'm not worried about it. I'm sure like this is like, this kind of almost feels like the grand inquisitor and, mm-hmm the kenobi show that one like you see it was so circular in that one overhead shot that you're like this is terrible you watch in the show it looks a lot better definitely not as long as i wish it could have been but much better here yeah this is already like a very solid starting place so i'm sure once we see him command people threaten people maybe getting even physical during the show it'll be be very interesting to see what lars can achieve with his like his whole body his whole facial everything involved yeah, and they're going with the uh, the pupil look that they had in Rebels and in Canon so far, instead of just like the straight red eyes, which you know I think will look good. I think it'll be more commanding. Uh, and and Lars Mikkelsen is a tall dude already, so it's gonna be he's gonna be intimidating when he stands over people. Uh, I just, I was hoping for a shot of him and Peleon together. That would be really oh that's man, crazy. that'd be too much. I think yeah. I think everyone from the '90s would just be like screaming like oh my god it's happening yeah. <laughs> yeah let's talk about balin too here because he knows anakin so it seems like I mean, everybody's had the theory about him possibly being the replacement for Jurus sabbath in this and it's very possible i think uh shin shin's appearance is the thing that you know leaves the biggest gray area because obviously Sabaoth in those books is like a madman on a rampage by himself. He doesn't really have allies. He doesn't really want allies. The only thing he's interested in is seducing Luke to the dark side. And uh, in this, Balin seems to have more of a plan. He's not, doesn't seem as crazy. At least they're not portraying him as crazy, but he knows Anakin. So he's either been around for a long time. 
he's a clone with the memories of an old Jedi. Uh, <clears throat> I think they could bring a lot of elements of Sebath in, uh, it, you know, it disappoints me a little bit to not have that character exactly because I think that character is just so weird and different from anything we've seen. But I think if you bring a lot of the interesting elements about his past and like the memories implanted from him being a clone and all that stuff into this character, if they, if this character really is the replacement, uh, I think it still can be really awesome. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's, it's very strange to see like the opening shot when, or the or the with the magistrate, right? I expected them to already kind of connect with her, but it almost seems like a very early on thing. Like maybe they're already in the works with her during the timeline of like season two of Mandalorian or even before, right? So that to me, look as a Kotor fan, that looks like a galaxy map to yeah. me. But it feels like maybe an artificially created like entry point into the world between worlds. Mm-hmm. I know that's been a lot of speculation there. <sighs> regardless it's at least like an energy shield sphere whatever that nobody can get into other than maybe like people already in there or the jedi yeah yeah i mean it that is very interesting i know what you mean by like you know having your respect like i i get it i think in some ways zon definitely goes a little crazy with him especially in dark force rising um but i think that what maybe like more modern star Wars sensibilities feel is like we know what the prequels look like. We know what the sequels are going to be like led into. Now it's like, how do we bring that like replacement, you know, kind of carbon copy and then break them down, fit them in, mold them into what makes sense for this timeline. It'll be interesting. Cause I mean, I think for a lot of us, you know, a lot of the Thrawn trilogy is incredible, but it really happens like at six months a year. Right. And then immediately after the dark empire and that, kind of removes a lot of consequence there so if there's obviously if Thrawn can continue that'd be amazing I think Shin will continue unfortunately Ray Stevenson won't be able to continue his bail on because of this unfortunate passing so maybe he's a character that like you know sets the stage dies in the season but if he continues I'm very curious what the role is further because he's already connected with Ahsoka here talking about you know your master and Ahsoka has made a point of saying she never finished her training with Anakin but Will he like meet Luke? Will we get a little bit more of that feeling that we get from the Thrawn trilogy? Will we get a little bit of Soka's commentary on that? Like be wary of him and stuff like that. I think that'll be pretty interesting to see. Yeah. And I think especially too, you know, looking at this and the world between worlds seems very much so supposed to be a part of this season or whatever this is, you know, Soka is fighting Balin already here with, in in this like it does look like a mini world between worlds like a almost like i had a a very much so a vision of like uh the flash comic books when he's Mm -hmm. running on like the cosmic treadmill and you have all these different timelines rewinding around him and all that it it kind of looks like that where it's like a little dome around him where he can kind of pick and choose where he wants to go and if this is a time travel story and not, not time travel but like about changing the past uh, i think that obviously plays a lot into what we've talked about with ahsoka in general being a multi-dimensional show one that covers a lot of eras we expect maybe clone wars flashbacks we expect anakin is in this show or hayden christensen is in the show we expect it to be more than just a force ghost there are a lot of things we can do here that maybe she gets glimpses of the past through this. Or uh, also, Balin has a line about what do we? They said, "What do we find uh, when we find Thrawn? What do we get?" And he says, "Power." And uh, that's really yeah. interesting to just to see what Thrawn has been doing over the last ten years because he's he's never been one for power. You know, it's always been in the at least the Zon books and canon. He's, uh, Thrawn is somebody who is more so out for the greater good in his mind than ultimately becoming the emperor like the heir to the empire tag was more so a legends thing than the way he's been developed in canon so what has caused this change of heart has there been destruction to the chiss are we getting into the unknown regions are we going to see more chiss than just thrawn i mean obviously if you get the effects down for thrawn you could bring in other chiss I can't wait oh, to yeah. see oh, what yeah. is in this show. Uh, this is going to be awesome. And uh, I think she's also like, we have a bunch of shots of Inquisitors and people she's fighting in this. 
Um, yeah, she's fighting the droids, the um, HK-80 yeah. something series droids yeah, that we saw. In, sure. I guess that might be a slightly different variation of them, but yeah, it's very cool to see that. <laughs> yeah, it's gonna be I big definitely big. think we're getting new Republic stuff because that opening shot seems like, you know, she's on a transport to get to them. Hera's role seems pretty interesting to me. I know there's been a Lego leak of Jason's kind of redesign and he doesn't have that crazy green hair that <laughs> everyone was like, does this work or not? So I'm very curious that, yeah, I'm, I'm very curious what his appearance will be like. Is it just like a tease for the future? Will they actually like give him an episode or to like develop and show that, you know, he has the force and that raises more questions and worries for like an Ahsoka mm-hmm. and while she's on this journey. Obviously this stuff here looks great. I mean, that's uh Kazuto's dad is over there from the resistance main lead is on the right to Mon Mothma. I think there's gonna be a lot of conflict and I think I'm very excited for that. Yeah, I mean we already know that the Republic demilitarizes, the new Republic demilitarizes really early when uh, we get to <laughs> the foundation of the new Republic in canon, and it seems like already you're starting to see that divide between uh, New Republic and Resistance already kind of forming here with Hera, where it's like we there are threats out there we need to fight. Same thing Leia had to deal with in Bloodline and later on down the timeline. And the New Republic is just so infatuated with this idea of perfection that it's had for the last five years away from the Empire that it can't imagine fighting in another war. (sighs) You know, I would hope Mon Mothma would be a little smarter than that, but we'll see what she does here. Uh, But yeah, that's a good, we had a good discussion there. Thanks for watching our reaction. Uh, Make sure you comment down below. Let us know all the things you're most excited for. If you have some theories, let us know. We're going to be doing a lot more Ahsoka stuff as we lead up to this. Some more theories, some lore, some talk about Heir to the Empire. We do have our Legends Book Club for Heir to the Empire, uh, or The Last Command, wrapping it all up sometime soon. So stay tuned for that. We're going to have a review of Inquisitor Rise of the Red Blade soon. We got a lot of stuff coming out. Make sure you stay tuned and of course if you were waiting for that high republic phase one and two reading guide it'll be out tomorrow now instead of today thanks so much for watching we'll see you next time